Hi everyone, thanks for joining us on a Tuesday TNT, catching up with all the main stories from around Thailand. And please subscribe to the channel if you get a moment, that really helps us along uh, as we do this five days a week, usually with a live show on Saturday and our Grumpy Old Men program on Sunday. Let's get into the news and obviously the big story still floating around, getting a lot of international coverage as well is the story about the two Kiwis, the two New Zealand brothers and yeah I intimated yesterday that I thought it might be two brothers indeed that was confirmed and Phuket news the Phuket news uh, right on the spot there in Phuket and somewhere as you can find there on their front page of their website Kiwis face five charges for police assault and two New Zealand men arrested for assaulting a traffic police officer and taking away his handgun face five charges for their antics and the men were forced to a stop and in the ensuing altercation one of the Kiwis forced Lieutenant Somsack to the ground and took his handgun while the other took his phone to delete any photos or videos recorded by the officer. Now, while the gun was being taken from Lieutenant Somsack, the gun fired two times. Luckily no one was injured. So initial reports were saying that the gun fired once, but there were eyewitnesses that said they heard two shots, so that's also been confirmed now. And both men are now in detention at the Phuket Provincial Court, and the two brothers face five charges, conspiracy to commit a robbery. Not sure how they're going to prove that they sat down and conspired to commit a robbery, working together to fight or obstruct officials from performing their duties, participating in physically attacking officials performing their duties, attempting to bribe an official and driving without a driver's license. And a police spokesman said, we've coordinated with uh, Phuket Immigration to request Immigration Division 6 revoke their visas. And we've requested that the court deny bail. Both men have denied all charges against them. So both men will have their day in court to tell their side of the story and uh, a visa will be arranged so that they can stay in Phuket until that day happens. Uh, now we go to some stories that came out yesterday from the New Zealand Herald. Now they actually posted a, uh, a video it was an edited video, I've seen the full video, but uh, the videos are not currently uh, able to be seen here in Thailand. And the parents of the brothers held in Thailand after a dramatic roadside tussle with a police officer have spoken of their distress over the incident as the brothers approached their first court hearing. And their parents, millionaire business and property owners Lawrence and Katrina Day, have asked for calm and privacy in the aftermath of the high-profile incident which saw video emerge and broadcast on Thai television of disturbing scenes. And Lawrence Day said it's very, very concerning. The family's distraught. We're praying for a good outcome. Uh, who would have ever expected this? Just a couple of kids on a tourist trip. Now, those couple of kids are both in their mid-30s and uh, both have got families of their own. And Lawrence Day said both men had their own families, including children in New Zealand, who were deeply concerned for their well-being. And photos like this, uh, which have been posted a lot around Thai media and spread around the world, are well, not really helping their cause. In video captured of the altercation, a woman can be heard shouting at the men, You stop, you stop, he have gun, you stop. A voice with a New Zealand accent can be heard saying, The policeman was trying to attack us. And the video shows Hamish Day standing at the roadside, watching as his brother Oscar tussles on the ground with the Thai police officer. He's trying to kill him, a voice can be heard shouting, although it's unclear who it's directed at. And Lawrence Day said his sons had been in Thailand for around a week, travelling and seeing sights. Both had uh, been to the country previously, and they thought it was a wonderful country. And further down there, until December, Hamish Day had worked as a chief executive at Code Avengers, an education business teaching computer programming, mainly through schools across Asia and the Pacific. And the company was owned by Lawrence Day, who was chairman. So that's some reporting about the incident from the New Zealand Herald. We come back home to Phuket and uh, some comments from the Phuket governor covered in the Bangkok Post. Com, Phuket Governor condemns New Zealand brothers who assaulted cop. 
And the Phuket governor condemned the New Zealand brothers who attacked a traffic policeman and stole his pistol on Saturday, saying their serious violation of Thai law is completely unacceptable. And he said such an attack, no matter whether it happens to our officials or ordinary people, is intolerable. The behaviour was improper and illegal. It sets a bad example in a tourist province like Phuket. Serious action will be taken to protect the tourism atmosphere of Phuket. Visitors and Thai people in Phuket must be safe. And some more information from the Phuket police chief who said the attacker who immobilised the policeman was a large, strong, mixed martial arts fighter. He eventually seized the gun and handed it to his brother. And this information, the New Zealanders' tourist visas were revoked and they would be blacklisted. So if nothing else over the past couple of weeks, we've learnt that arbitrarily the Phuket immigration can revoke a visa. Nothing has to be proved or gone to court. You can just have your visa taken away from you. And it also says a vehicle rental firm would be fined 2,000 baht for renting motorcycles to people without a driving licence. So I don't have any problems with the Phuket governor making those comments. I mean, he's well entitled to do so. He's the government appointee, as are all governors, except in Bangkok where they're elected. Now, my only problem is when there are situations of violence imposed from ties to foreigners and tourists on the island, we don't seem to get the same amount of condemnation from the Phuket governor. So I think his uh, words are well said, and I agree with what he said, but let's make sure he uh, provides similar condemnation when the situation is reversed. Our program today brought to you by Five Star Marine at uh, fivestarmarinephuket.com. A great sponsor. If you'd like to head out onto Pangar Bay, let's hope it's a daylight today. There's uh, about 30 islands out there, most with spectacular beaches, and Five Star Marine would love to take you out there. Go to the website, check some of the destinations, read some of the stories from people that have used their service, and uh, make a booking. There's a special deal in uh, the section underneath this video for TNT viewers. As we go to this next story, an update on a story from yesterday, Bangkok Post reporting deputy police chief may be suspended over online gambling allegation. And the story says the national police chief, General Torsak, of the photos of Surachat, said on Monday that his deputy, Surachat Hakpan, may be suspended due to a probe into the latter's alleged involvement in an online gambling network, and the case would be concluded before the chief's retirement this September. And Surachat had been summoned to appear at the Tao Poon police station this Thursday in connection with the investigation into the BNK master network of gambling websites. The National Police Chief acknowledged the argument from Surachat that the NACC had taken over from the police the online mini gambling network case in which Police General Surachat was a suspect. But General Torsak said the police interrogators summoned Police General Surachat on another case, this one concerning the BNK Master Online Gambling Network, and he said Surachat was suspected of money laundering in both cases. Well, no matter what happens with that case, it will drag on for months, and General Police General Surachat uh, in line for the top position as a chief of police in Thailand, but it looks like he's made plenty of enemies over the years. And we go to the next story, and this is, uh, well, another long-running story here in Thailand about the procurement of a brand new shiny submarine and a frigate. And ThaiPBSWorld.com says the Navy stranded without submarine or frigate amid budget crunch. And a House of Representatives ad hoc committee on the budget rejected the Navy's proposal to buy the warship, citing budget constraints and a poor procurement plan. And the Defence Minister said the government was not able to arrange enough budget for the Navy to purchase a 17 billion baht frigate to replace its ageing fleet uh, this year. The national defence budget would have been too high as the Navy continues to remain interested in the submarine project. And when asked if the Navy would have a chance to submit its proposal for consideration in the next fiscal year, 
Sutton said the Air Force had already submitted a proposal to procure 12 new fighter jets that might cost 19 billion baht. And the opposition, we, the Move Forward Party, chose the frigate over the submarine because it would be more useful for marine security and benefit the economy. And the Thai Navy is in need of at least eight frigates to fulfil its defence mission and to protect national security and interests in the Gulf of Thailand and the Andaman Sea, while neighbouring countries, notably Singapore and Malaysia, were increasingly building their sea power, according to a senior naval official. Back to the Defence Minister, who said the Thai Navy would likely go ahead with the controversial submarine project as the working group to review the procurement would conclude a study soon. He said it would be a submarine for sure, but we have no idea from where it would come. So is it going to be a Chinese submarine? Is it going to be a submarine at all? Are the Thai Navy going to get frigates? And what about all those fighter jets? Obviously quite a lot going on. The budget's this big and the Navy and the Air Force want this much. We'll just have to wait and see what happens there. Let's go to a story from a grab in this case, and it's covered in calsodenglish.com on their Facebook page, sorry. Uh, today, March the 18th, that's yesterday, marks the first day that Dunlang Airport set up a grab booth to offer more choice for travellers using the airport. And the airport director said the move enables passengers to have more choice through Grab App and a booth that will help reduce the congestion for both arrival and departure passengers. Well, gee, the app's only been around for, what, four or five years? Uh, let's hope that the other airports in Thailand do the same thing and stop all this ridiculous uh, cabals and taxi mafia that certainly still exists in Phuket. And that story from the Kalsod English Facebook page. Another follow-up story, we go to the BangkokPost.com and it says that the Parks Department to get tough with forest intruders. And with forest fires raging in several northern provinces, resulting in the accumulation of PM2.5 in the atmosphere, the Department of National Parks, Wildlife and Plant Conservation yesterday warned that legal action will be taken against those who illegally enter forested areas and set them ablaze. Well, they seem to be rehashing orders that were made, gee, at least six months ago. Now, the department chief said the department recently issued a ban prohibiting anyone from entering 11 conservation forest zones and 10 national reserved forest areas in northern provinces. So let's check the situation today up in northern Thailand and iqair.com reporting that today Chiang Mai, well at the time I did this anyway, had the fifth worst air pollution of any city in the world and there's a big white circle around northern Thailand, plenty of uh, red and purple to be seen. And just so you can get some context, we've got an arrow pointing to where Bangkok is. And uh, well, further context, this is further down in Phuket, the arrow actually pointing to where I live. And then you can see uh, plenty of green down in Phuket, uh, pretty much the further south you go in Thailand this time of the year, the cleaner the air is going to be. Uh, speaking of clean air, this is quite a good uh, summary from Yahoo about the current situation with cannabis in Thailand. Thailand to ban recreational marijuana by the end of 2024 and Thailand which decriminalized cannabis in 2022 is poised to reverse course and snuff out the recreational market by the end of this year. And draft legislation banning recreational cannabis use is already up for cabinet approval, aiming for full implementation by the end of this year. Under the new measures, medical marijuana would remain legal, and officials cite the need to protect youth from what they deem the negative impact of cannabis. And Thailand became the first country in Southeast Asia to legalise the medicinal use of marijuana in 2018, and the first in Asia to allow recreational use in 2022. Well, they didn't specifically allow the uh, recreational use, but that was assumed by the lack of any laws saying that you couldn't smoke recreationally. And the decriminalisation fueled an economic boom in Thailand, with the cannabis sector projected to reach 1.2, that would be billion US dollars, in value next year. Cannabis-themed businesses, festivals and open cannabis use have become common in the country. 
And the draft law proposes fines of up to 60,000 baht for a recreational use, while advertisement or marketing campaigns regarding such use could draw jail terms of up to a year. And the health minister has emphasised the negative impact of recreational marijuana on Thai children. He noted that the proposed ban aims to regulate cannabis use more comprehensively after criticism of hasty and fragmented regulations following the decriminalisation. And illegal cannabis shops will face closure with the government discouraging home cultivation. While around 20,000 legally registered shops may be subject to tighter regulations, and the draft bill banning recreational cannabis is expected to undergo cabinet approval next month before heading to parliament for passage before becoming law. Enforcement is slated before the year's end. Well, looks like the party is going to continue until at least the end of the year. Then we'll have enforcement, exactly what that's going to look like. I have no idea, but a good summary there from Yahoo News. Hopefully you're a bit more up to date with things happening around the country. Please subscribe to the channel and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.